I didn't think I was going to become a security architect. So when you became a security architect, what was that inciting incident? What does the day in the life of a security architect look like? I had no idea that your role can evolve into becoming a security architect. What is that final piece of advice? Someone's listening to this podcast and they're like, ooh, I love the security architecture stuff. Who says tech can't be human? What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. Glad to be back again. I am super excited about this episode. One of my favorite games to play on a phone or a computer is Tower Defense. Mm -hmm. Tower Defense is a game where you're trying to protect something. And so you're pulling different weapons and armies together in order to protect the thing that you hold dear in this game. I think security architecture is one of those roles that is a lot like tower defense. You're pulling in solutions to protect your crown jewels, your critical assets, whatever it is that's important to the business. And you spent a lot of time being a security architect. Yep. What is security architecture from your point of view? It's exactly that. It's playing that game of tower defense. But in technical terms, security architecture is the security controls, policies, and guidelines that you implement for an organization. One of the things that I love about threat intelligence is I think you could be pretty early on in your career and be a threat intelligence analyst. Maybe you're someone that's reading open source, coming to conclusions, writing assessments, doing some summaries. But security architecture seems like one of those roles where you have to be in the game for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't want someone brand new coming in, trying to architect what your security stack might look like. Where would you say security architect is in that career path for someone? I think it's having mastery in some senses of one thing or at least a few things. When you think about security architects, you can think about an architect of a home. An architect mm -hmm. of a home is going to design the home. They're gonna, right. They may not do the building or construction of the home, but they'll know this wall can bear this amount of weight. Mm -hmm. the, the roof can bear this amount of weight. This is also the structure. And the really cool thing about architects, whether it's security or even home, is that they design the system. Right. They really imagine and write up how is it going to look. In some ways, they are responsible for how it's going to operate as well. Yeah, it's funny because when I used to think of an architect that you know helped build a building, I thought that they might have been on site, like sitting there, like telling where things need to go. But some architects, they really just draw out the plan and like they move on to the next one. What does the day in the life of a security architect look like? Do they just build out the plan and move on to the next thing? Or do they do some of the integrations and stuff like that? There is a wide range of security architects. Some are very technical where they're not only doing the architecture, like the planning, the designing, talking about the controls, policies, and guidelines, but they're also doing the engineering mm -hmm. and implementation of those designs. Some other architects live at a very high level. I've even seen some CISOs be considered security architects because mm. not only are they constructing the security solutions and orchestrating it, but they're also constructing the team. And a lot of times the team is built around the architect. The architect is going to give instruction to the engineers. The architect is going to give instructions to the analysts and let them know what they can and cannot do and what will or will not break depending on what they do. So it sounds like there's a little bit of nuance to being a security architect. Are there like types of security architects, like cloud focus architect, solutions focus architect, even like homegrown? Maybe it's a startup business that's using, you know, Microsoft Defender and some of that stuff in order to do the security architecture. Are there different types? Yeah. So a solutions architect is a role that is typically performed by a vendor. A vendor is going to look at all of the solutions that you have in your environment. Maybe you have an EDR, uh, a firewall, a cloud solution, mm -hmm. right, or a cloud environment. They're going to look at all of these different components and assess how are they operating? What are your configurations or policies within those systems? And then give you a recommendation for what you can add to it. Um, one of the examples I love that you give all the time is Formula One. Mm -hmm. In a Formula One car, you have the driver, and the driver is driving the, the car. And you could look at that driver as someone that's just interacting with security for an organization. 
but you have the crew that is instructing the driver on how fast they can drive, uh, how fast they can take a turn. Mm -hmm. And that's what the architect is advising a lot of the team members. They're saying, hey, if you were to implement this security solution, you might not be able to ingest this amount of data because there's limitations to our product. Mm -hmm. You need to buy a, a larger license. So the security architect is really gonna understand those components. And for a cloud architect, that's where things are really interesting today because mm -hmm. a lot of organizations have flocked to the cloud and in the cloud, it's wide open. You might have homegrown solutions, you might have SaaS applications, you might have applications that you want to buy in the future that aren't yet developed. A cloud architect, they are wearing even more hats. Mm -hmm. uh, from you know my experience, I've mainly focused on just the security aspects. Gotcha. Focusing on the solutions, focusing on the people, and also focusing on the controls. So when you became a security architect, what was that inciting incident? We love to talk about stories. What was that first pivot into being a security architect? What did you think it was going to be like before you became one? And how was it different once you got started? I didn't think I was going to become a security architect. I thought that this was something that you had to apply for. I had no mm -hmm. idea that your role can evolve into becoming a security architect. Right. So I was a threat Intel analyst, um, but mainly focused on automation for mm -hmm. Intel. And Intel, they asked me to first analyze data, mm -hmm. started to analyze data. Then they asked me to start engineering data. So I started to say, all right, well, what do y'all want me to engineer? They said, we would love for you to take this output from VirusTotal and put it into our case management solution. At the time, it was ServiceNow. Mm -hmm. So as someone found a malicious artifact, they would go to VirusTotal and we would automatically pipe that into ServiceNow. Yep. And then after that, they said, well, we see that you're great at engineering these solutions. We want you to now design something that isn't yet available by a vendor. Mm. So we had to, me and a, and a team, we created this security stack where not only were we enriching alerts, but it also served as almost like a sidekick. We, we built a Chrome extension. So mm -hmm. as you went to a threat intel report, there was an overlay and right. you could say enrich all of these indicators and also put them into our threat database so we could reference them later if they're ever seen in an alert. Mm. And so that's like the, the beginning of it. And then you moved on to another role where you were part of being a, a vendor and having that customer success. You're talking to different clients, talking about different technology architecture. What goes into being a good security architect? What are some of the, the skills, the, the ideologies, or even some of the preconceived notions or natural abilities of a good architect? Listening is one of the most important things. Listening and curiosity. Um, you hear that all the time from employers. That's what they want their next employee to be is curious. But I think listening is a great attribute for any security architect, but also this uh, idea of diplomacy because mm. you have to make many people happy. You are in security because you're um, servicing the business. You're enabling them to either go faster, move with more caution. Um, so that is a big thing is listening, diplomacy, and also curiosity. We have some news to share with you, a member of the Hacker Valley Media family. As of 2023, we became a full-time independent cybersecurity media company, and we're committed to bringing you the most powerful, thought-provoking stories in the field of cybersecurity. And we learned we can't do it alone. We'd love to invite you to our exclusive Patreon community, where we host a monthly mastermind where you can meet like-minded individuals in the field of cybersecurity that are trying to be more creative and be the best version of themselves that they can be. We would love if you took a second and visited patreon.com forward slash Hacker Valley Studio, and we'll see you in the mastermind. What does security architecture look like when it goes wrong? When people either make mistakes, they get the wrong solution, they don't co connect things correctly, or maybe they're just blind to not knowing what they don't know. What, what is a good story that would have a good learning lesson for someone that wants to be a security architect? When I first started my career, I never read documentation like 
fully. Mm-hmm. I would always open it Who up does? and try to skim through it as fast as possible. Yeah. But when I switched over to being a vendor, I really understood the importance of best practice. Mm-hmm. Best practice is defined by typically the vendor or a subject matter expert. Mm-hmm. And it's the instruction on how you should implement a control, how you should react to a guideline mm-hmm. and things like that. But when you don't follow these best practices, you leave yourself open for vulnerability. Um, I've seen breakdowns internally on teams that I worked on, worked with and at um, not implementing best practices and facing the consequences of tech debt and also breaches. When you're looking at different solutions to bring into an environment, what are the tenants of like finding the right solution for a particular problem? The tenants that I would say is defining the use case. In a perfect world, you would also define the business requirement. Sometimes businesses move so fast that they don't spend time defining why they are going to uh, start an initiative. Mm -hmm. And and as a security architect, that's not really your job. Your job is to respond to the technical requirements that your leadership gives you or your Mm -hmm. stakeholders. So um, a lot of the times uh, what would happen is we would define our use case. And an example of a use case is we would like to enrich all indicators in an alert. Right. You have a lot of indicators. An indicator would be a asset name. An indicator would be an IP address, mm-hmm. um, maybe a domain name. Having as much context collected from the alert and also as much context given to the analyst as possible is uh, what I seen and what I did a lot when it came to starting off on a right foot. With security architect being, I would say, in the mid or even upper echelon in someone's career, what is uh, some salaries that you think or a salary range you think would be great for someone that's doing this type of work for an organization? I have not seen an architect get paid less than Mm $80,000. And this is like very low. Right. Very, very low. And some architects make up to four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Um, I have a friend that works at a, uh, a company that does ride sharing. You mm-hmm. can guess which one it is. Maybe it's Uber. Maybe it's Lyft. I'm not going to put them on blast like that. Right. But uh, they make five hundred k, five hundred k. I think it's three hundred k base, two hundred k in stock and bonuses. And the beauty with that role is they get that um, bonus and stock every year. A lot of companies give you a four-year vesting cycle, Mm -hmm. but some allow you to vest and get a recycling of, you know, all of those bonuses and equity Mm -hmm. every single year. So I would say, you know, if anyone were to ask me, Ron, what should I expect or aim for when it comes to security architecture position? I would say no less than 120 Mm -hmm. and really work your way up based off of your skills, based off of maybe even your locale. Are you going into the office Mm -hmm. and look at some other uh, requirements that are going to fulfill you, but also fulfill your employer? Let's say someone's listening to this episode and they're like, oh, wow, this is right up my alley. I would love to be a security architect. What are some of the resources that you would recommend to folks to get into security architecture? I created a video with SANS. It's all about security architecture. Mm -hmm. I tried to break down as much as possible from the OSI model to an example use case of this uh, fake company and how they should build and think about their security stack and environment. SANS also has courses on security architecture. They have a full curriculum. It's uh, quite extensive, also quite expensive as well. So I would highly recommend anybody to get a voucher there if they uh, were interested in taking that course by SANS. And, uh, you know, there's also resources like Udacity, Udemy, but we have a Patreon as well where a lot of people jump on and they ask questions about, hey, how can I go about achieving X, Y, and Z in my career? In this situation, we've had some people come on and ask how they can become a security architect. What is that final piece of advice? Someone's listening to this podcast, they're like, ooh, I love the security architecture stuff. This sounds like right up my alley. What is that final piece of advice that you'd have for that person? Put your reps in. Mm. There's so many ways that you can become a security architect. If you started out as a SOC engineer, you can become a security architect by understanding how to assess alerts, how to assess incidents, and really having experience there. Because if you can build a system around doing that faster, you're gonna have a lot of success. Same for compliance. If you really understand where those compliance requirements, now you're at the top without Mm -hmm. needing those technical skills because Mm -hmm. you understand what do auditors need? What does your business need to pass compliancy requirements and Mm -hmm. demands? 
And um, one other thing I would say as well is cloud architecture is hot. It's mm -hmm. popping. It's probably the most lucrative when it comes to a salary perspective. Getting those reps in in cloud environments, whether it's at your employer asking for some responsibilities there or just signing up for an AWS GCP as your account always goes a long way. Powerful advice. Masterclass. Look at that. Yes, sir. If you want to pepper this man with questions, be sure to join our Discord at hackervalley.com forward slash Discord. There's a bunch of folks from cybersecurity creators to practitioners and leaders. There's a bunch of folks in there that you could ask all sorts of questions and even contribute if that's something you're looking to do. And with that, we will see everyone next time.